Hello everyone and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. As always, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, so make sure to give this video a like, but also leave a comment giving all your thoughts on everything that is currently going on. Okay, so it's the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day to everyone. This is the day we can celebrate our heroes fighting for this country for our independence and freedom from Great Britain. And it's really amazing if you think about it, being able to take on and defeat such a strong military and then being able to expand our country from 13 colonies to 50 states, expanding our borders to the Pacific Ocean. Of course, this country has not been perfect. We have definitely had our flaws and morally wrong actions, such as allowing slavery to take place early on. But I think the good that this country has done for the world definitely should not be overshadowed by its moral evils. And it's definitely a day that should definitely be celebrated. So with that said, prices might be a good bit steeper this year to enjoy the 4th, but try to get out, have fun with your friends and family, and most of all, stay safe and try not to lose any finger shooting off fireworks. Okay, so the next presidential election may still be two and a half years away, but it's really going to begin heating up. Between whether or not Donald Trump is going to decide to run again, there are certainly a lot of questions. If Trump does decide to run again, what does that mean for the Republican Party? Will Republican voters once again vote for him to win the primaries, or perhaps will someone like Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, come out on top? Some have argued that moderates are so turned off by Trump that even with President Biden's failing economy, they might still vote for Biden just to vote against Trump. And so they argue it might be better to go with a fresh face such as Governor DeSantis. In recent polling, however, Donald Trump has been beating DeSantis by large margins, with the Emerson College polls having Trump taking 55% of the vote and DeSantis just 20%. Some of the polls taken in late June by YouGov had the margins even slimmer, with Trump only receiving votes in the mid-40s. Overall, that's still a pretty wide margin though, but with a couple of years left to go, DeSantis certainly has time to fill in the gap. Now, if Trump decides not to run, then DeSantis at the moment would be the favorite, at least according to a new Harvard Caps Harris poll, exclusively shared with The Hill. In that hypothetical poll, where Trump does not run, DeSantis took 36% of the vote, with former Vice President Mike Pence being in second place with 17% of the vote. Ted Cruz came in third. So just a quick poll for my YouTube audience. If you were going to go vote today, who would you like to see win the Republican nomination to face off against President Biden? Of course, there are even huge question marks on whether or not Joe Biden will even win the Democratic nomination, or if he'll even decide to run again. Right now, there are growing calls from even Democrats saying that perhaps Biden maybe shouldn't run. There's a pretty lengthy New York Times piece this week about will he or won't he run? It seems to frustrate President Biden a great deal. Is there anything he can do to tamp down these stories? Uh, probably not. I mean, he does want to run, and even if he had private doubts, he wouldn't acknowledge that because then you become a lame duck. Uh, but there is a growing calls from Democrats. This is not the uh, opposition party saying he maybe shouldn't run. And this ties into the abortion decision, I think, because uh, by the left wing of his party, the president is seen as ineffective, not just on abortion rights, but he always seems to be playing catch up, whether it's baby formula or at the border, uh, hasn't been able to deliver on voting rights or police reform, all of these issues. And so uh, it, it's a hard position for Joe Biden. You would think he would at least have the support of his own party. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the age question and the fitness question are now being openly debated in part thanks to these media reports. Other than Democrats, former CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, is the latest one to be critical of the current president. Back on Saturday, which also happened to be my birthday, shout out to my wife for a pretty awesome day if you're watching this. President Biden tweeted, my message to companies running gas stations and setting prices at the pump is simple. This is a time of war and global peril. Bring down the price you are charging at the pump to reflect the cost you're paying for the product. And do it now. This is something the president has been saying for quite a while, basically that it's not his fault for the lack of supply of oil, which is bringing up the prices, but it's just these gas companies taking advantage of the situation and price gouging. And so apparently these companies could have been raising prices to over $5 per gallon for decades now, but they waited until Biden got into office to make him look bad or whatever. Anyways, to that, Jeff Bezos replied saying, ouch, inflation is far too important of a problem for the White House to keep making statements like this. It's either straight ahead misdirection or a deep misunderstanding of basic market dynamics. And he's completely right. It's pretty basic economics. 
And if you're going to artificially lower the supply of oil and gas by shutting down the future production of domestic oil, then it's very obvious what's going to happen to the price. If I decide to start growing apple trees to sell apples, starting out, my price is probably going to be pretty competitive in the market. After all, I'll be competing with what customers can find in the store, plus the demand will still be lower than the overall supply. But let's say later on, I decide I'm going to tell everyone else that they can no longer grow apples because of the damage they're doing to the environment, and only I, maybe, can continue to grow apples. What then happens is the supply of apples is artificially lowered, the demand stays the same because people still want to buy apples, but since we have multiple people fighting over my limited supply of apples, I'm left with the opportunity then, as well as the grocery stores, selling them to then raise the price. Why sell for $1 per pound when the supply of apples I have can't keep up with the demand? And that's what President Biden has been doing with gas, shutting down pipelines in the production of new oil domestically, but getting mad at gas stations for having higher prices. Whatever your politics are, we cannot ignore hundreds of years of economic research. If you argue to be the party of science, then let's use this research to the best of our abilities. Okay, so now moving on to some news and stimulus checks. If you're a taxpayer in the state of Colorado, you should be receiving some extra money pretty soon. At some point in August or September, you should be receiving a stimulus check in the mail of either $750 if you file your taxes as being single, or double that of $1,500 if you're a joint filer. Now, back in April, a bill was signed into law in Colorado that would give taxpayers an estimated $400 for single filers and double that of $800 for joint filers, but because of the state's strong economic performance, they had low unemployment, they actually decided to increase the amount up to $750 for single filers and double that for joint filers at $1,500. Again, these payments should be sent out in August or September, and it's very possible that other states also decide to follow suit, especially with this extra inflation. More than likely, these payments will take place in blue states such as California, who is also going to be sending out payments, with red states holding the belief that extra money flowing into the hands of Americans is very likely just to cause even more inflation. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. But before you go, if you would like to receive an additional six stocks at no cost to you, in the comment section below, I will pin a comment with a link where you can gain six free stocks from Webull. Now, what you'll need to do once you click the link is to first open an account. Then, once you have your account open, you'll need to make a deposit of at least one penny. Additionally, if you activate Webull Crypto and complete at least one trade, you'll then be able to claim $5 of Bitcoin or, of course, any other cryptocurrency of your choosing. Once you receive the free stocks, you can either sell them and transfer the money to your bank account, sort of creating your own stimulus, or hold them and watch them potentially grow over time. That is, of course, completely up to you. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, I would encourage you to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and make sure to ring the notification bell. That way, you will be the very first to be notified when I do release future videos. And until next time, have a wonderful 4th of July, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.